All right, so I'm going to do a bit of a demonstration. I don't know if I'd really call it much of an experiment, but um, a few weeks ago, I saw a guy that made a video on tempering steaks, which is leaving a steak out, letting it come up to room temperature before you cook it. And the theory is that results in a more evenly cooked steak because you don't have to raise the inner core temperature as quickly uh, to hit that final temperature that you want inside. Now, I really don't have any disagreement about the fact that, um, you know, having a steak that starts out at a higher temperature inside uh, can cook more evenly. Uh, the real discussion that was kind of interesting to me is that there are a lot of different sources online that say that tempering a steak doesn't really do any good because the steak doesn't actually come up to room temperature very quickly. And this guy's video he found a pretty significant difference. And so one of the, the things that I pointed out is he used a metal pan whenever he was tempering the steak. And most of the other stuff that I see, they're using wooden cutting boards. Um, and so that's like, um, I think is it Kenji Lopez Alt, and I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. Guga. Biggest myth you will hear from anybody. Let the steak come to room temperature before you even start. That is not true. I just pulled these steaks out of the refrigerator right now. These steaks are currently at 42 degrees Fahrenheit. If I leave them outside in the refrigerator for one hour, it's not gonna come to room temperature. It will raise only 10 degrees. A bunch of stuff online, whenever you see it on you know, different websites, different like America's Test Kitchen, stuff like that. They all say it doesn't matter because the steak doesn't come up to temperature quick enough. And so I just wanted to do a little demonstration of the difference between using uh, this, which is a fairly heavy, um, this is uh, a polar wear made in USA, NSF rated. This is a very heavy aluminum uh, sheet pan versus just a cheap uh, wood cutting board. And so I'm going to take a couple of steaks. I'm going to leave them out for an hour or two. And I'm going to monitor their temperature with this. This is a fireboard. It's what I use for my smoker. Um, and it will allow me to track the internal temperature of both of these steaks over time. Now, the two steaks are not totally identical, but they are very, very similar. They're from the same cut. I cut these myself. They're uh, steaks that I aged myself in my refrigerator. They are between one and a quarter and one and a half inches thick. So they're pretty thick steaks and um, we'll just see what happens and is there a difference between uh, letting something come up to room temperature on a sheet pan versus just a wooden cutting board because I think there probably will be a difference. I think this thing's going to act like a big heat sink and basically allow the steak that rests on this pan to heat up quicker. So let's see what happens. So here are the two steaks. Again, they're New York strips. I've cut them myself. Again, they are dry aged in my refrigerator and then trim and so i did want to get them as close as i can to being the same they're not exactly the same size but again they are pretty similar just going to dry them off and here you can see good uh thick cuts again inch and a half inch and a quarter uh, both of them pretty good size okay so here we go i'm gonna set these up probes in i'm gonna try to put that right in the middle of the thickest portion each one of these and let's see what happens. I'm gonna put them right in the middle. Counter temperature is about 75 degrees. You can see um, on the fireboard, they are both within a degree of each other starting out, about 40 degrees uh, coming out of the refrigerator. So I'm gonna set an alarm for an hour and then we'll check back in. So I thought I was gonna be able to uh, show you some difference in the heat conduction, but I forgot that aluminum is basically an IR mirror. Uh, those red spots you can see on this uh, aluminum pan, those are the ceiling lights, which aren't even on currently. I guess they're still warm from wherever I had them on. But yeah, so I can't really show you the heat traveling through the aluminum pan, but we can look at the, uh, the wooden cutting board. And so um, you can kind of make out the edge of the board right here. And you can see as I touch it, you know, where my finger is. Um, and then you can see around the stake, the cold patch, basically, um, you know, wood's an insulator. And so that's part of the uh, the point of this little demonstration uh, is just to see whether or not that really makes a difference. Now, again, uh, in theory, you know, the aluminum pan should be uh, kind of getting cold uh, all over. You can see, you know, again, it, it's basically a mirror. Um, and 
So it's kind of weird, you know, my hand is way up here, uh, but you can't actually see uh, the temperature of the pan because it just reflects uh, infrared. So anyway, uh, we're only about 10 minutes in, uh, nothing too startling yet. Uh, the aluminum steak is uh, about a degree, a degree and a half warmer already. But uh, again, we'll see if that widens out over time. All right, so we are an hour in, and here we go. The wood is up to 57 degrees, more or less, 56.9, and the aluminum, 62.6, which is quite a bit different, right? That's a pretty good result. Um, remember that these started off around 40 degrees, 39 and a half to 40 degrees. Um, and so, you know, the aluminum pan is working just like a big old heat sink, and it is getting the temperature into that steak quite a bit faster. Um, you know, it's up almost 23 degrees versus 17, and that's roughly, you know, a 33% faster warm up. It makes a significant difference. What you warm up your steaks on will affect their temperature. Wood is an insulator. It's not going to transmit uh, the heat into that steak very quickly. Whereas this big old aluminum sheet, yep, it's going to uh, get the heat transferred a lot quicker. They actually make uh, these big thawing devices, which I don't know that they work that well, but they are essentially just big aluminum heat sinks for uh, frozen meat to help it thaw quicker because this is how it works. So um, I'm seeing a much larger temperature rise than most of the stuff that I have seen on the internet. I'm also, you know, sitting at 75 degrees on the counter, whereas a lot of those things, they'll say that they're at like 70. So I'm sure that has something to do with it. But, you know, I'm only 12 degrees off from uh, ambient uh, for, you know, in an hour. So that's that's a pretty significant rise. Now, the last thing I want to check uh, is just with a little spot probe, um, just to make sure that our readings are pretty accurate. And it looks like it. Yep. So 65 over here. Um, let's go over this one. Yeah. So um, I'd say that the internal probes are pretty accurate, again, with those temperatures, because, you know, I'm only checking like one spot, so there is potential that maybe it's just a warm spot or a cold spot in that steak, but uh, checking in a different spot with uh, a hand probe seems to kind of confirm the data that we're seeing. Uh, the other thing to note that, you know, yeah, I've got probes in these and, you know, damn you, Schrodinger, um, by having the probe in the meat, the probe itself can, since it's metal, uh, transmit a little bit of warmth into the meat too. But uh, um, look, I don't think that's that big of a deal. Um, so this is one hour. I'm going to give it uh, another maybe half hour and see where we end up after an hour and a half. Um, once you go past two hours, you start to risk safety. And I am going to eat these because way too much money in steaks uh, sitting on the counter. Um, but I'm already way past uh, most of the results that people online report, you know, as far as how much does a steak warm up? Well, number one, I'm showing a much higher temperature rise in the wood um, cutting board than they do. You know, they're like the, some of them, they say that they're only hitting like 52, 50, you know, degrees after like an hour. Well, I'm showing, you know, almost 58. And then if you put it on aluminum pan, you know, I'm looking at over 63 degrees. So uh, it's, you know, well over 20 degrees rise in an hour um, from this aluminum pan. So we'll give it another half hour. We'll see what happens. All right. Well, there we go. Hour and a half in. Uh, 67.2 degrees for the aluminum pan. 61.4 for the wood. Uh, surface temperature on these. 61 degrees. 65. Yeah, so... And so um, I think that's where I'm going to stop because I, I am about to cook these. Now I'm going to sous vide uh, these steaks and then finish them on the grill. But, but you know, as far as uh, the things that you read online, whenever they say uh, resting steaks will not bring them up to room temperature very quickly, well, it, it may depend a little bit. I could see that if somebody were in a very, very, like, um, a very cold environment, like they were keep keep their house at 70 degrees or something and they're trying to warm that steak up in a styrofoam 
you know, container or something that maybe it wouldn't heat up very quick. Um, and then somebody else that tests it in a warmer environment and they're using a, a metal pan, specifically an aluminum sheet pan like this, they might see a steak warm up quite a bit because, well, I mean, different types of materials are going to conduct heat better and aluminum's probably going to give you about the fastest temperature rise possible. Whereas if you're doing wood or a uh, ceramic plate or a styrofoam container, those are going to be a much more insulative uh, platform and it's just not going to warm up as quick. So if you do want to warm up a steak quickly, using an aluminum sheet pan is a pretty good idea. Um, but do keep in mind that the more steaks you put on it, um, just like any heat sink, it's only got a certain amount of capacity. And so you know, if you loaded this thing up, they're not all going to warm up as fast as you know just one steak on this huge pan. You could also, again, you know, Picturing this as just a giant heat sink, if you put a fan on it and blow over, you know, room temperature air, it would also help warm that steak up faster. Now, whether or not bringing it up to room temperature affects the evenness of the steak when it's cooked, I'm going to leave that alone because um, I just don't have time to mess with that right now. But, you know, I mean, if anybody's interested in that one, I can try to give that a look. But uh, steaks are not cheap and, you know, I don't want to waste a bunch of steak doing uh, a little experiment, which I don't really know if anybody's going to find it that valuable. But there you go. Um, you know, according to this result, warming up a steak on aluminum pan, uh, roughly 25% better after an hour and a half. Uh, I will also, I guess, you know, since I'm rambling here, uh, the advantage to using this aluminum pan is larger uh, during the first hour over time as these steaks approach room temperature um, and I'll, I'll roll in the graph um, the warm-up slows down so that eventually look th this steak will catch up because eventually this one's going to hit 75 ish degrees and it's going to stop warming up this one will eventually hit 75 degrees so in the long run you're going to get the same place uh, this offers a temporary advantage, you know, that's larger over the first hour, hour and a half. So within a certain range, you know, it's given 30 to 50 percent advantage. Um, you know, right now it's, you know, five and a half, six degrees at a 28. So again, roughly 25 percent over an hour and a half. Um, as far as the, the temperature differential advantage. But anyway, uh, that's it for this one. Um, I'm going to cook these suckers and treat my friends to some uh, dry-aged steak. Uh, hope you guys enjoy it and go out and enjoy yourself some beef.